Hey, Jesse, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hmm, I need to make some audio adjustments and some background adjustments. Am I quiet? I'm still background. Bubbles dark. There we go. Bubbles dark. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Open Court with Judge John Hodgman and Bailiff Jesse Thorne. If you can hear me, great. If you can't, I'm working on it. Sound. I want to make sure. Output should be. There we go. Now I can hear myself. That music is much, much, much too loud. Let's make that adjustment right away. There we go. There we go. Dooty, 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 dooty. Jesse, can you hear the little music? Dooty, dooty. I can't hear the little music anymore, but I can hear you. Oh, I think the little music's about to loop back in. Dooty, 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 dooty. Yeah, there it is, baby. Hey. Sounds good. I feel like Sade. <laughs> it's 4.02 p.m. and we're chilling out. Sade style. It's... It's the virtual courtroom of Judge John Hodgman on the first day of Max Fun Drive. Hello to all of you nice people in the chat. I can see you chatting. If you are on Facebook, the Judge John Hodgman page on Facebook, if you're on my Twitch uh, stream, uh, which is twitch.tv slash John Hodgman, might even get some YouTube comments. If you're watching on Twitter, you can't comment, or at least I won't see you when you do comment. Um, but you might uh, very well be able to join this conversation because I'm going to, in a moment, share a, uh, a URL that will allow you to join this conversation. Oh, I guess Jesse's out of here. I did my best. Thank you, Jesse. Great to see you as always. Whew. Will anyone else step up to be my bailiff? Just kidding. Uh, uh, Jesse? What happened to Jesse? Well, I'll say hello to everybody in the chat so far. Tyler McNeil, hello. Susie, hello and over there in England. Shannon, hello. Tyler, hello again. I have unmuted myself. Carl, Tomiko, Carrie, Frozen Cusser. Uh, Tomiko wants to know, Jesse, are you ready for baseball? Tomiko, I could not Tomiko? be more ready for baseball. In fact, uh, I am watching spring training games and listening to them on the radio that's how ready for baseball i am that's how and ready I'll, for baseball he is I'll, I'll tell you this john to me the greatest one of the greatest features of baseball yeah is how boring and meaningless it is yeah nothing more boring and meaningless than spring training games that don't even count and mostly feature <laughs> minor <laughs> leaguers that will never play in the majors right because the regular guys play like two innings and then uh, go back to the hot tub. And I love it. I love it. I am listening to the fourth string San Francisco Giant broadcasters, mm -hmm. Joe Rizzo and F.P. Santangelo. Wow. Course. Go ahead and name and shame them, Jesse. They're so great. They're doing a really great job. I okay. Yeah, Fourth string is their, is their, is their uh, job position. It's not the, uh, a statement yeah. on their quality of their their work. This is this is the Giants, I think, triple A announcer. No, right. single A announcer. I think he he works out of San Jose. The Giants single A announcer and uh FP Santangelo, I think, hosts a local sports talk radio show. He used to he played for the Giants for a little bit. Jesse, I have a question for you. Have you ever dreamed about being a baseball announcer? Did you know that Scott Simon from NPR took a year off from NPR to be a minor league? 
play-by-play -play guy. I did not know that. That's true. I absolutely, I mean, that's why I got into broadcasting, I would say, other than David Letterman. Um, I think my favorite was Hank Greenwald, the Giants play-by-play -play guy, although I've loved many over the years. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've, absolutely. So absolutely the dream is real. Like, it's very hard, though. I mean, it's both hard to get a job and it's hard work because you're traveling the whole time. And yeah, no, I mean, it's not it's not possible for you at this stage of your life as a parent of young children and so nope. forth, but perhaps down the road. When I'm an old man, when I'm 62 years old and, uh, you know, professor emeritus at NPR like Scott Simon, absolutely. Right by then, by, then, here I come. By then, it won't be baseball. It'll be space ball. Thank you. Ken asked whether I support the pitch clock, and it's fantastic. They're, I don't know what it is. They're making pitchers they're making batters hit and pitchers pitch within a certain amount of time because they otherwise they tend to wander around and think about things mm, and i understand it adds a lot it yeah. really adds a lot because it means that you're watching the baseball game rather than guys wandering around and thinking about does that have anything to do with this question from tyler how does jesse feel about the rule changes i basically support all of them although i hate that in extra innings they put a guy on second base now and that's just because everyone wants to go home but it's a weird, lousy way to decide who won the baseball game. Um, and I think that the shift restrictions are pretty meaningless, although yeah. I'm totally fine with them. I like against... the big bases. I like the pickoff limitations. I like the pitch clock. I like all of it. It's kind of crazy that Major League Baseball did this many things in a row that I like. Tim wants to know, is this Get Your Pets? No, it is not. It's apparently baseball talk with Jesse Thorne and a increasingly confused Judge John Hodgman. Here's something from Jay of the Internet on Reddit. And if you have a case for us to decide, um, enter into the... How do we do it, John? If you would, if you have a dispute that you would like us to adjudicate, you may enter it into the chat. You may... Uh, or you may request to join this video feed if you promise not to, you know, swear and say terrible things. No, I'm don't going say to, Baba Booey. Yeah, please don't say Baba Booey. My dispute I'm, is with Baba Booey. <laughs> I am going, please don't prank us. This is a sincere thing. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the, oh, here's how I do it. This is how we do it. If you want to join, got a beef question mark, air it by clicking here. And then there's a rather complicated URL. I'm not going to make a bit.ly for it. I'm going to read and there it is. someone posted on Reddit. Right. Uh, J of the Internet. J of put, the Internet. I know. I want to put that I know all the lyrics to all the songs from Grease 2 on my resume. <laughs> I don't really have a lot going for me on my resume, so I put stuff like this in, mostly for my own sanity. Currently, I tout my expertise in the forest moon of Endor, Ewoks, and Donnie Darko and the philosophy of time travel. My parents are absolutely aghast that I would do such a thing. I mean, presuming that Jay of the Internet is applying for a job at my freshman year dorm, uh huh, they're golden. <laughs> <laughs> what are the things that he wants to put on his resume? Forest Moon uh, Endor? Knows all the lyrics to the songs from Grease 2. All right. Knows a lot about the forest moon of Endor. Okay. Ewoks. Don't Ewoks live on the forest moon of Endor? A little bit of overlap there. It, would, it seems like a little bit of padding, a little resume padding at that point. And Donnie Darko and the philosophy of time travel. I think they should just put exclusively movie posters from dorm rooms at my college. <laughs> so just put... I'm an expert in Donnie Darko, Reservoir Dogs, The Usual Suspects, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let me say this. Uh, what is the name of this person again? Oh, Jim, Tim from the Jay Internet? Jay of the Internet. Jay of the Internet. I think that if you put, I know all the songs from Grease 2, that's golden. Uh, yeah. uh, that's, a, that's an eye catcher for sure. I think that people will find that to be charming and funny. I think that if you add on, know a lot of facts about the forest moon of Endor, unfortunately, you're going to, you're going to hit some anti-nerds out there the wrong way. And, and then you're the going to hit actual nerds the wrong way. Nerds will not like it because they'll think yeah. they know more than you do. Yeah. And the Donnie Darko thing would just make me too scared 
to call you. So no offense. I haven't seen Donnie Darko, but it seems scary. So I would just say, and, and, and people care about it in an intense way that makes me uncomfortable. So I would just say just the first thing, you know, all of the, the songs and presumably the lyrics from Greece too, and see where that goes. That's a fun thing to add. Hey, I, just, I'm with you a hundred percent. I think all the nerd stuff is on the nose and is just going to upset nerds and upset non-nerds both. And I think that Grease 2 is fun and you might as well put it in there uh, if you're applying to something where they might like to hire someone who's fun. I just wanted to point out that M. Weintraub says it's a tremendous chore coat that I'm wearing. Great blue color. Thank you. Very we much. see it. You put it on the screen in giant letters. Yeah. You're giving you're giving Hodgman as by watching this, you're giving Hodgman the power to broadcast compliments in giant letters across the screen. I love it. I love this power. Michael and Carrie, I see you in the waiting room. We're going to go to you shortly, so don't don't give up, but I'm going to give you this quick one first. My husband, oh, it's it's Tamiko again. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. My husband and I use rock paper scissors to decide things. Sometimes either of us will follow through. Please rule. We must follow the rock paper scissors rule at all time no matter what. I'm not sure I understand what the I think sometimes they rock, paper, scissors or Rochambeau or one, two, three for deciding disputes. But then they know, don't. Who gets to ride in the front seat or whatever. Right. But sometimes they don't follow the outcome of the no. contest. Right. Yeah. No. Follow that. Look, you make you you, you make your bet. You got to stick with it. If you lose the rock, paper, scissors, then you then you've lost the argument and you got to sit in the back seat or whatever. We're doing this, by the way, because it's the Max Fun Drive. So if you're yeah. already a member of Maximum Fun, thank you. If you're not already a member, go to maximumfund.org slash join and sign up. Uh, our thanks to everybody who has already done that. Uh, you can also, of course, upgrade or boost or get a gift membership for someone or even just uh, tweet or post elsewhere on social media about the show, about the drive uh, with the hashtag Max Fun Drive. We're very grateful to you. I bet everybody has seen the news, but we did announce that we're becoming an employee-owned cooperative uh, today. I'm really excited about that. So, yeah, if you think that's worth supporting. I think it is. John, John and I, the creators owning our show and the folks who work in the business office owning the business office, yeah. go to MaximumFun.org slash join. We got Michael and Carrie in the waiting room and Greg is in the waiting room. Let's go to Michael and Carrie. Hi, Michael and Carrie. Hang on. Let me. There we go. Hi there. Oh, it's so nice to, to talk to you and to have the chance to meet you. Now, you're not going to baba booey us, are you? No, sir. Promise. <laughs> no pranks? Okay, no, good. Not capable. Welcome we to don't Open Court Pranks. We might accidentally become popular on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> <Like that. laughs> Welcome to Open Court with Judge John Hodgman and Bailiff Jesse Thorne. I am speaking to Michael and Carrie. Yep. Uh, that's what your, your thing says. What, yes. is the, what is the nature of your dispute? Thanks. Uh, so the nature of our dispute is whether a tenant in a rental unit uh -oh. is responsible for paying for their own light bulbs when the light bulbs burn out. Wait, so which one of you is the landlord and which one of you yeah. is the tenant? <laughs> this is a fun rom-com. <laughs> We're both tenants. Yeah. <laughs> You're both tenants okay and your light bulb has burned out and you don't know what to do about it so you call <laughs> as you can see we're just using ambient light behind us <laughs> yeah you've called the light bulb daddy aka your landlord saying i don't know how many of me it takes to screw in a light bulb please do it for me is that do i understand correctly no not, not quite but it's a it's a funnier spin than the reality um so my my perspective is that uh, a light bulb is like any other consumable um mm -hmm. Same as you need to buy your own food to put in your refrigerator, you need to buy your own light bulbs to put in your fixtures. And yes. if, if the bulbs burn out, then uh, the tenant's responsible for, for buying new ones. Uh, whereas I say, you know, light bulb is part of the house. Like you wouldn't come into a rental, you know, like completely bare bulb, expect to fill it all, all yourself. So the point being, you should, you know, that that's part of the, you know, agreement you enter into when you rent it's one of the advantages of renting that you have somebody else to take care of all these things rather than pay your own money for it so i say that we should be calling our landlord to replace these uh, various burnt out bulbs and hopefully Michael, are you hold on are you imagining that you will call your landlord and that person will come over to your house to put light bulbs in um maybe not put them in but at least supply them or or reimburse you yeah. if you buy them either either way but like the outlay shouldn't be my money for it. Are you in the United States or Canada? We're Canada. in Canada. I had a feeling. 
Only oh. a Canadian would think this way. <laughs> that's, a comp- that's a compliment. It's a compliment. I have to say, here at Max Fun HQ, which is where I am, and yeah. forgive the nightmarish lighting of this setup, but it is what it is. Here at Max Fun HQ, there are a few very, it's like a loft. There are a few very high up fixtures that take specialty bulbs hmm. that very rarely burn out. There is also a full time maintenance staff in our building. And so once in a while, we do run into the maintenance guy and say, there's one of those weird bulbs is out. Uh, can you replace it? But I was a renter at home for many, 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 for most of my life, all my childhood and most of yeah. my adulthood. Yeah. And I can't even imagine, I cannot even imagine calling my landlord because a light bulb burned out or being like, a light bulb burned out. I'm going to take $2.29 off my rent check this month. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that the, the the commercial tenants expect and are granted a certain a different level of service than residential tenants. But I mean, it would all be in your lease. Is it covered in your lease, Michael or Carrie? I have to uh, look at it again. To be I, honest. I don't think it's specified. Mm. I think it's silent on the question of uh, of light bulbs. Well, yeah, because you should re- you should replace them yourself. <laughs> Michael, have yeah. you literally ever met someone whose landlord replaced a light bulb for them in your so entire this life? So came up because one of Carrie's coworkers did just that, and and rents and uh, and has you know basically he's called their landlord and has gotten this service. So to my mind, like if it's been established that it can be done, like why are we wasting our hard earned money? Wait, on- you said if someone you know called their landlord and the landlord sent over a crate of light bulbs or whatever? <laughs> so that, that's how this this dispute first came to us. Is I, I have a, a young colleague who's in his early twenties. Um, and he put in actually an emergency call for to the after hours line because one of his light bulbs had burned out. And I, I was trying not to be judgmental, but it struck me as just so ridiculous that I, he wouldn't buy his own light bulb and put it in and, and that it would become. An and what was the outcome of his request for emergency services? Someone, I think someone very begrudgingly came over and put in a light bulb. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's one Did thing to ask for the because pet. someone on Reddit suggested that he do it. I don't think uh, so. Or did he do it because he sincerely believed that was the thing to do? I think I think it was sincere. I think it was a bit of inexperience. You know, a young guy, maybe first rental property. Um, and I, yeah, I, I thought it was a little bit silly. Uh, his his perspective was, I pay for the apartment. The apartment should be serviceable in in every way. Part of that includes having functioning lights. So. I think that was why why he made the call. It's an and I, I brought this dispute home, and then it became a point of uh, dispute for us. Yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting hair to to split, for sure. Because I definitely appreciate that argument. And if indeed you had um, unstandard light bulbs, like some kind of special, like there are these halogen lights that go under the uh, under the cupboard under the cupboards above the counter that we have in our house that I do not know how to replace. Luckily, there's someone in my house who does um, know how to replace those, so I rely on her. Um, but if it's a high ceiling light fixture that has a special kind of light bulb, I could see calling the landlord. But, I mean, you have to strike a balance between what is um, l- l- legal, legally uh, justifiable by the letter of the law uh, versus what is you know, ultimately sort of personally humiliating to be out spending time on the phone begging for a light bulb. What if never what if mind you... having it installed? Yeah, and Michael's question is what if you have no shame? Uh yeah, but you might not have shame, but do you live together? Yeah. Yes, we're married. Well, you know, you might think about how it affects your spouse's image of you. <laughs> <laughs> There's really not much further to go. <laughs> okay. Then go get that light bulb. Go get that free light bulb. You know, I would also check with the Canadian government. They may have a free, they may have a light bulb program that you can look into. <laughs> Apparently in the state of California, landlords are legally required to provide and maintain required light fixtures. So that means that like if there are multiple lights in a room, more than is legally required, they're not responsible for all the bulbs, but uh, generally speaking, one light fixture p- per room, they're responsible for the light bulbs in. Well, a fixture is one thing. Like if it's not if it's a non-functioning fixture, then obviously the landlord has to correct that. But it but includes a, it includes the bulb bulbs in those fixtures. It's sort of like um 
uh, it's sort of like you have to provide working doors and windows that can be locked. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a function of the law, but that's only for those that are, that are legally required. And I presume what's the bulb? Almost any rental unit in California has more lights than are legally required. What's the bulb in in particular? Well, there's actually the, the ones that are are probably the most problematic. We have some in the bathroom that are like a very non standardized type of bulb. It's one of those weird ones with a very narrow socket. And here I betray my lack of technical expertise. But... Well, uh, what are you on a laptop there? Yeah, I'll take us into the bathroom. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, I'm going to mute you while you get ready there for a second. We're going to take another. Uh, here, this person says, I wouldn't think poorly of someone asking the landlord who is responsible for replacing light bulbs. But I would I would think poorly if the tenant threw a fit about needing to do it themselves. Yes. I mean, if you can reach the bulb, certainly. Certainly you should be able to. Okay, here, they're back again. Certainly you First should be all, able to. We're in show business. These are entirely familiar to us, not weird. Yeah, these are these are uh, uh, make a uh, uh... whoa. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I immediately assumed that what you guys were describing was like a compact fluorescent with a weird base that you couldn't figure out. Those are just regular vanity bulbs that you could get at. You could probably get those at the drugstore, much less the hardware store. Eh, it's the principle of the matter. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's very clear. Oh, well, I don't know what sort of bulbs he's he's working with. I would say, I mean, there are two principles here. One is, what can I, you know? I'm paying I'm paying rent on this apartment. How can I get the 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 last cent of value out of this? Well, well, here's the here's the principle. Are you a person who values a measure of self sufficiency, who enjoys the smallest of projects, such as? unscrewing that light bulb which i know you can do because someone in your household just did it carrie did it and then take and then taking it to the hardware store or, or whatever you call it in canada um and the the home furnishings uh, uh, center with a tre on the end and saying can you match this and getting it and coming home and putting it in and then turning it on and there's light and you feel good I mean, th that makes me feel good. That makes me feel more good than being on the phone with a landlord going like, but the contract says you have to do this. Or maybe that's not your voice, but you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're the person who likes, who takes value and, and, and enjoys getting into s small little phone disputes with uh, landlords, who of course don't really require our protections, uh, then go for it. But um, I, I would think differently of you. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I generally <laughs> avoid phone calls wherever possible. So I'd be more yeah. inclined to just buy the bulb. I think there's some fun in self-sufficiency. And I'll tell you what, if you ever intend on, um, op you know, fingers crossed someday in a thousand years or whatever, owning a home where you are solely responsible for all that stuff, the more you can learn about the home systems now, the better. It's, you're living inside of a big puzzle. And uh, it's fun. I mean, I think it's fun to solve puzzles rather than to, to, you know, just be like, mm, can you solve the puzzle for me, please, daddy? Like, that's how I feel. <laughs> Sorry if I infantilize you. Uh, no, no, no. I, I take the fault for calling your landlord daddy. <laughs> <laughs> One Even time. He uh, or she is daddy. Now, see, some people disagree. Minneapolis Mike says no fun in self-sufficiency. I would I would just argue that, you know, kind of to your point about landlords not needing protection, like, yes, of course, it's like we are capable of, you know, going to the hardware store and getting a light bulb there. But considering the asymmetry of, you know, what a landlord has the ability to do to you versus what you can well, do. Well, I appreciate your class warfare aspect to this. You want to wear them down one bulb at a time. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You want to take it to the man. Though. That's what I would say. If you're worried about the class warfare aspect of this, the benefit here is not in making your landlord angry by uh, calling and making them come over to do this for you. Uh, I think the value here is in knowing that they didn't do it for you. And then later when an actual thing happens, being like, yeah, and you're going to have to change all my light bulbs. The law says you have to. <laughs> Needless to say, folks get feisty in the chat and they are not in favor of the landlord. So they say, go, go get them. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're getting some yeah. interesting responses. Yeah. I got to say this. If you're going to put, if you really are going to put this ball in your landlord's court, then um, I got to say, you're going to end up with some real mixed color temperatures, okay? This is going to be a major concern for your <laughs> That's interiors. That's a good point. 
That's a good You're point. Be looking sallow or drunk at all times. <laughs> Old of you to assume I don't already. <laughs> Everyone says get them bulbs. <laughs> I mean, if it's in your if it's in your lease and you can get your landlord to do it, by all means, go ahead and do it. It's, you're just going to affect how people think about you, your your wife, me. But you know, if if you love the if you love the folks in the chat, uh, uh, then you know they'll love you. So it's, <laughs> who do you want? Who do you want to love you? You, the landlord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want the landlord's love. Trust me. I I would also add that, like, also you. Even even if we assume that in relationships with landlords, one is acting exclusively out of self interest for class warfare reasons which maybe I agree with 85% um, personally. I think that even if you are acting solely out of self-interest, establishing an adversarial relationship with your landlord over a matter of a dollar and 49 cents is probably not worth it when you may want them to do more than is legally required at some point in the future. That's a good point. No, sir. Well, thank you very much for being part of Open Court. Uh, what part of Canada are you from, Michael and Gary? Uh, we're currently living in Ottawa, Ontario. That's that's the capital of all of Canada. That is yep. correct. Wow. -ee. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Have you ever uh, been here before? No, I'll never go to Ottawa. Sorry. <laughs> not a million, billion, not a, trillion, not trillion years. Not you think I am some nasty senator? Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd I'd go. I'd definitely go. I'd definitely go to Ottawa at some point. We want to come back to Canada soon. Uh, how far away is it from Toronto? It's about four and a half hour drive. Oh yeah, then I'm not going. Sorry, I'm, 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 just, <laughs> my mind. I'm, I'm getting a transmission here. It says, Sorry, yeah, not can't going? not going, not going. Well, no, we just go heard from it. our uh, heard from our uh, travel agent Jesse. We're not going yes. to Ottawa. Yeah, four and um, hours, she said. But but thank you very much for being for airing your uh, dispute with us. Thank you so Thanks much for, for chatting with us. Yeah, thank you, thank Michael. You. All right. I'm going to remove you from the stream. Jesse, tell them why we're here again, if you don't mind. Well, it's the first day of the Max Fund Drive, which is when we ask you to support Judge John Hodgman and all of our good efforts by becoming a member of Maximum Fund at MaximumFun.org slash join. Our shows are really, truly paid for by members. That is about 70% of our revenue. And um, it's the reason we're able to limit our shows to two ads an episode. Uh, it's the reason we're able to give away almost all of our work for free uh, is because people like you go to MaximumFun.org slash join and become members. So thank you uh, if you already have done so. And thank you if you're about to do so. It's MaximumFun.org slash join. I put, down, I, put the, I put that URL right down here in the bottom of the screen, Jesse. MaximumFun.org slash join. Here we are. Uh, Poodle Soup. Jim? Poodle Soup is here. Oh, thank goodness. Or, Poodle Soup is fine. Or is here. Poodle Soup here? Hello, Poodle there's, Soup. There's can Poodle you hear me? Soup. My name is Judge John Hodgman. Let me put you in a place where we can see you a little bit easier. Hello, Judge. Oh, uh, hello. I, I was not prepared to appear in court, so I'm sorry for my under chin camera. No, you, no, you're uh, experimenting with bold cinematic techniques like what's yeah, I feel I feel like I'm I'm watching an artistic foreign film. I well, love it. Good. Are, are you are you using that camera that um, Stanley Kubrick developed to film by candlelight for the movie? Um, like Barry, Lyndon? Barry Lyndon. Yeah, thank you. Obviously, I am. Yes. Yeah, very nice. So there's only one of you, and that's fine. Yes. What is the nature of your dispute? I have a dispute uh, with, uh, let's say, a, a younger generation. I, I recently. <laughs> I find in your favor. <laughs> I recently was called a boomer. Can you believe it? Because I said that um, voice uh, messages via WhatsApp are rude and lazy. Voice and I, messages via WhatsApp via what, are yes. rude and lazy whatsapp is a that's a chat program right it's a chat app it okay. is and how do the voice messages i mean how is this different from voicemail well the difference is um one sends a message and the other person instead of just ordering their thoughts and mm -hmm. giving a you know a brief response will just record a, a voice message and just ramble on 
and I, as the receiver, would have to, you know, analyze what is what is um, relevant and what is not. And I find it rude. So this is so Liz. Hey, Liz this is pointing out like voice memo instead of text. I'm yes. Like, right. Okay. Voice gotcha. memo. It's sorry. Right. It's a voice memo. It's not like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like they go like, uh, here, this is me. This is me. Poodle soup. Like, instead of going like, hi, Poodle soup. Uh, it's Judge John Hodgman. I need your attention on three matters. One, two, three. Goodbye. Until next time or whatever. Farewell. Instead, I'm like, hey, Poodle soup is me. I'm just walking down the street. And uh, I was thinking of you. And oh, yeah, I need uh, three things. But uh, before I say that, oh, oh, I almost stepped on a dog. Like that kind of thing. Exactly. You don't like that. I do not. Right. I have a question for you, John. Yeah, go ahead. In the standard messaging app that came with your telephone. Yes. Uh, let's call it a fruit-based app. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used voice memo? Voice memo? No, not voice memo. Have you ever used in the messaging app? the little microphone that allows you to send a voice memo or have you only tapped it accidentally when trying to tap send? Yeah, I've never, I have never sent a voice memo nor have I ever intended to send a voice memo. I have tapped the microphone and saw that it started recording, but I would never do that. But Audrey in the, in the chat, who if I'm not mistaken is um, the partner of one of our maximum fun uh, friends in the person of Dan McCoy, unless I'm mis remembering your screen name or that's a different audrey but anyway audrey says voice messages or memos are for when you have hot goss aka gossip you don't want it to be screenshotable oh people passing you hot goss not at all where no. are you in the world poodle soup i'm in belgium in belgium what's there's the hot goss from brussels these days oh there's a lot going on um political a lot, yeah a lot political, cultural yeah, uh, many things we're belgium we have three languages we have six governments there's a lot going on yeah. there's a lot of hot goss going on and but but then again one does not need to like just you know throw it out just just give me the just the facts just the facts man please just the fact do you have um, a voice memo from someone that you'd be willing to share with us i could not that, why that, because they're not because that 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 would be that, it would be a complete <laughs> violation of their privacy and probably exactly illegal. no one can screen cap it it's audio only but it's just, that's, <laughs> you can't screen poodle cap soup, audio way. poodle soup's defense against being called a boomer is uh knowing allusions to dragnet so <laughs> i don't know quick shout out to perry von vicious my wrestler friend in western massachusetts saying these days boomer is really a state of mind Oh wow! Hey, Perry Von Vicious, you must have some beefs with some of your wrestling friends in the in the independent wrestling circuit of New England. What are the, what's the hot goss in, in wrestling? Who's 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 beefing with whom? <laughs> Put it in the chat or join us. Type a thing in. Uh, well, what are we what are we finally ruling on this, Jesse? I I agree. You know what? You. I agree with you, Poodle Soup. You should say to your friends, I don't want to listen to your ramblings. Please type I did. It and then I did. Happened? Well, then they were they were um insulted. Yeah, insulted. well, once a boomer, always a boomer. It's your own. <laughs> you brought that upon yourself. You have to live with your choices. That's the thing. You're right, but you have to live with your choices. So get outside and yeah. shake that fist at that cloud. That's right. <laughs> Just all your our job as as older people is just go outside. St scream at the sky as we walk towards and then fall into our graves. That's it. That's all we have left to do. I'm sorry. I agree it's with you, but I'm not sure you're going to win this fight. It's, it's like uh, ending a text message with a period. It's just impolite. Do we use yeah. the same generation names in every country? I thought Boomer was American or North American at most. No, 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 no. It's, 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 uh, how do you it, say? It, it, how do you say boomer in in uh, in Belgian French? It's just boomer. Boomer? No, no. <laughs> what are the other no. languages you speak? Oh, I, I, I'm Flemish. I, I Flemish. mean, I, my my maternal language is Flemish. I also speak uh, French, and in French is boomer. 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 
Boomer. Boomer. Okay, Boomer. And in Flemish, <laughs> how would you say it? How would you say okay, Boomer? Boomer. We just say Boomer. How do you, you say okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, Boomer. Okay. That's a different... In the French, in French, Belgium, it would be okay, Boomer. Okay. But in, but in Flemish-speaking Belgium, it would be okay, Boomer. They would say, d'accord, Boomer. D'accord, Boomer. D'accord. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing uh, your dispute with us, with the whole world from across the pond. <laughs> They're in the capital of Europe. Are you in Brussels or no? No, I'm in Antwerp. Antwerp, second capital of Europe, Antwerp. Yes, and much prettier. Sorry, uh, Brussels. Yes, right. Okay, Brussels. Yeah, enjoy your sprouts, assholes. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. And thank being, you for and your. And if ruling. you are for being a member of Maximum Fun, we're not going to. I don't want to embarrass. Uh, in case it's yeah. not. All right, Greg and Cassie, we see you there. Thanks for your patience. Hello. No, we can't hear you, oh, Greg. You're muted, Greg. Let me know. Yeah, there we go. Here. Cool. Uh, How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. You have any trivia By questions way, today? Greg <laughs> is wearing a grumpy trivia theme T-shirt, which <laughs> I can't imagine anything more on brand for a Judge John Hodgman listener. It's Here's true. Yeah. Trivia dude. That's I'm, right. I'm prepping for my uh, live event tonight. So. Oh, congratulations! I'm dressed for it. So. What is it? What is your live event tonight, and where is it? Uh, if you're in Omaha, Nebraska, you can come to Viz Major on Monday nights uh, at 6.30 p.m. Viz is, Major? Yeah, Viz Major. It's a great brewery, and uh, they have good pizza and good trivia, too, if I well, say so myself. I'll just do a little plug. Go check out Viz Major on Monday <laughs> nights, and then go there again on Friday and turn the, tell them to turn on Hulu <laughs> so everyone can watch all eight episodes of Up Here, the brand new romantic comedy, musical comedy from Are they? Me. Are they dropping all at once and not not a, on weekly installments? No, like, they're all at once. Everyone's going to get all the musical rom com they want. Nice. Omaha Mutual of Trivia. So, what is your dispute? You are you're there by yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, my my partner Cassie is in the other room. Uh, we we both work from home on Mondays, but um, uh, they work a job that is a little bit more demanding and not as fluid as mine. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they are they're in a, uh, filing a, a case against me in absentia. So I'm kind of the defendant, and uh, they are the plaintiff. And it concerns towels in our home. Sure, um, towels. Yep, and uh, and the use of them, the overuse of them, the mislaying of them. Um, and I, I'm definitely the uh, defendant uh, in this because I have uh amidst the adhd medication shortage uh am a little bit lackadaisical with where i leave towels and when okay and how many times i use them and when um and i i guess the crux of my argument is this is a little trivia for you up here on the screen a little <laughs> trivia about greg that's you true, yeah. trivia for us last year that it was, was awesome and super helpful i agree that was a pleasure april but yeah and, and thank you john um but yeah i uh Will uh, I? I grew up in a home with like a linen closet full, like just no towel ever got thrown away, um, and and like eventually towels worked their way down the the sort of like the towel chain from like good towel to utility towel or to like beach towel to utility towel to like mm -hmm. scraps basically, you know. Um, now let me ask you because I've had I've had some emails and I I don't remember <laughs> who sent them to me. <laughs> But it's a couple, and I wonder if this is you and Cassie because maybe I no. didn't put the names. No, I don't. Okay, I don't think that's. A, I haven't emailed you about this. No, because the 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 this is a heterosexual couple. And the woman mm. in the couple is annoyed at her husband, let's say, because mm. he uses bath towels in the kitchen as as tea towels. As oh kitchen no, towels. no, yeah, I that's not that. you, is it? No, I. Yeah, everyone take a look at Jesse Thorne's reaction to that. Go ahead, do it again. No, no thank you. Yeah, even I have boundaries in that, stronger than that. So yeah. Um, and I, I did read up before like hopping into the waiting room because I, I saw that you did a you adjudicated a case about somebody who was cleaning empty litter boxes with bath towels, which was beyond the pale for me. Um Yeah. So yeah. what is your crime? You use too many towels and you leave them all over the place? Yeah, I do I do not adequately prepare for like the journey to the bathroom. I don't like, you know, 
pat out to like have everything I need to in the uh when taking a shower. Um so I will some I will like enter a towel into circulation from the like beach towel pile that is off to the side and, right. and kind of out of the way. Um because in Omaha, first... you're always going to the beach. You probably have so many <laughs> beach towels. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know. we go to the river. The river's nice. I believe you. you the like Mississippi River? Uh, Missouri is what we... But you don't want to be in that water, no. But no, there's some good tubing rivers, though. Wait a minute. It's the Missouri River? Or yeah, the Mississippi River? The Missouri is on... Uh, and on Omaha. the other side is is what? Iowa, right? Iowa yeah, City, Iowa, yeah. Illinois is is the Mississippi, right? Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, you don't want to be near. So the you're water you're recruiting Missouri. beach towels into the regular. Yeah, and then leaving them around. Rotation. And, yeah, and and we tried we we we've partially addressed the dispute because now I use the we have like four bath towels in circulation, and I use the gray ones in the set, and Cassie uses the blue ones. So like my towel deviance is local localized and i am the only yeah. one who has to like bear the brunt of of using right. a towel three to four times um before washing it. right and i guess and I when guess the... and when t towels are left around mm -hmm. it is known who the culprit is yeah. because they are color-coded yeah. yeah yeah we're really conflating two major different issues here <laughs> yeah sure one <laughs> is using a towel three or four times before washing it mm -hmm. which you know Look, as if I've learned anything on this program, it's that reasonable people may disagree about matters of cleanliness and hygiene. And by mm -hmm. reasonable people, I mean unreasonable people who send me messages. However, using a towel three or four times before you wash it seems strikes me as obviously perfectly fine. You don't have to, mm -hmm. okay. but you're not going to die of it or even get gross. Yeah, However, I mean, you use a bath Leaving bath your towel, towel you're around the house is a whole other thing. Mm, okay. That's about making your house ugly and weird for every and damp for everyone right. else. Yeah. And I, I, I would say I, I never leave them like on the floor. Like it, they always go over a door or something like that to dry. But no, um, that's not where towels go. But okay. I really do. I do want to acknowledge your partner, Cassie, because they really hit a grand slam home run with this towel tracking system of separating the colors so as to blame yeah. and shame you. Oh, I, yeah. I pitched that. I think that they're absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, that was, that, that well, was that's, a, that's on brand for Judge John Hodgman listeners <laughs> to, to point to themselves to welcome I, the shame. I think I think <laughs> cohabitating couples having different color-coded towels is um, probably very wise. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Greg, while you're here, what do you yep. think about N. Bornstein's situation? My wife leaves kitchen towels on the counter Mm -hmm. Then grabs a new one from the drawer, uses it, then folds it and puts it back in the drawer. Dirty? E Is that what e you mean? Even to me, who's probably like on the slob side of the slob to snob pH scale, that is foul to me. Right, right. Because that's, like that's an enclosed space. That's, that, Coke that's 311 says, if your wife is doing the cooking and or the laundry, I, I say let her do whatever she's going to do with the kitchen towels. I don't know. I don't think putting putting dirty kitchen towels back into a into a clean towel drawer is a good idea. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the the damp is going to like seep and and grow there. But that's Carrie's like, yeah. husband dries his face with a kitchen towel and then leaves it on the counter. Hmm. I mean, that's wow. not good either. No, that's not great. Don't 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 put kitchen towels to your lips. They're not as clean as you think. Mm -hmm. And also don't use the, don't use used kitchen towels to dry off dishes. If you are hand washing dishes, air dry, or if you must paper towels, but don't wipe them down with used kitchen towels because they are not clean enough. Mm -hmm. Don't mix dirty with clean. Okay. That's yeah. I mean like, that. Yeah. Sound, sound a little I think that's how you there. get, I think that like <laughs> the last of us situation with mushroom zombies starts with, a dirty towel in a clean towel drawer like that. Hey, I just want to point out that that sounded like some Mussolini stuff <laughs> <laughs> up ear is airing in Portugal too. Apparently with a, with a uh, Cockney accent up ear. Hello, it's me. I'm from Lisbon. Kate, I thought you were, I thought you weren't in the uh, Azores anymore, Kate. I thought you had left. This is our, you know, I do, I, I do some streams and this is relevant to the topic because I, 
would do some streams where I would play. Um, and it started last Max Fun Drive, where I would play SimCity online with people. And Kate was a, my regular uh, uh, civil engineer advisor and was building my cities. And then also I would do Get Your Pets, which is my afternoon talk show where I interview cats and dogs and other pets. And here's the thing. If we reach, what's the goal for Get Your, get your Pets 2000? New and up, I think 2500. No, yeah, if you know, during this max fun drive, if we, if we as a podcast, Judge Sean Hodgman reach 1000 new and upgrading members, um, then that will trigger the release of my usually annual podcast with Jordan Morris, Shooting the Breeze, which is all about cheese, and that'll be fun. But if we are so lucky as to get to 2500 new upgrading and boosting members for the Judge John Hodgman podcast, then I will do Get Your Pets every day, every weekday, for two weeks, every afternoon, wow. right here. And you know, you've been a guest before, Greg. You've been a great guest with your wonderful dogs. Yeah. And uh, I, I really I hope that we here. can get to do it. So if you have if you if you if you if you if you have it in you. Oh, look at that. This is Ruffles. He'll turn 18 in May. That's right. Oh my gracious. Why not head oh on gracious. over there to why not head on over there to maximumfund.org slash join in honor of Ruffles? Yeah. Join yeah. or Ruffles gets it. <laughs> yeah, it's Wait, pretty what? much. <laughs> Is that? I think. Wow. National Lampoon style. Yeah. It's wild that you would say that. I'll tell you what, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're not getting, if you have beefs, you need to, you need to air them. If you have disputes, let us know. I'll put the link back up again. Or if you just have pets that you want to share with us, or if you just want to chat with us, happy. I want, bet we'll find a dispute. Go ahead. What do you, you want? Say, a, do you want a trivia question to wrap up and uh, as you welcome somebody in? Yes, I do. Um, in Scrooged, Bill Murray plays a cranky TV executive when who, when forced to send his employees gifts for the holidays, gives nearly all of them what cheap item? What cheap item? Christmas movie. <laughs> well, in Scrooged. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is a Christmas movie. Yeah. What cheap item does he send? Mm -hmm. I thought that you were going to be asking about how he's asked Ro his boss, Robert Mitchum, is forcing him to make TV shows for cats and dogs because they're because oh, yeah. they're a big <laughs> they're a big member of the advertising audience. <laughs> um, I really remember about Scrooge is that Carol Kane is in it. Put Carol Kane in more stuff. Yeah, she be in everything. I mean, yeah. Is it? A Somebody's... Bill Murray bobblehead? There's a guess. Is it a bath towel? It is it a is, hand towel? It is a bath towel. Yeah, VCR bath or towel? towel. <laughs> uh, Christina Reagan says she can only think of the bonus in Christmas Vacation. What was the bonus in Christmas Vacation? That you was know that a, one, Greg? I think it was a Jam of the Month Club. A Jam of the Month Club. I think. But Bill Murray gives out hand towels is that the answer uh bath towels bath it's, towels it's, well it's done right to the topic of this uh of this call so well well done everyone who guessed correctly and well done everyone who guessed any uh incorrectly and christina points out you're right greg jelly of the month club okay no well, greg said jam of the month club well oh you're right so <sighs> sorry to say greg you're wrong and therefore you're out of here whoa later Trump. so the <laughs> So the trivia master becomes the trivia student. Here's Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Hi. I didn't expect to actually get on. So I put it in the chat um, in Facebook. Oh, My well, I'm glad you're I here because I missed it. <laughs> the, the chat moves real fast. The chat moves uh, my fast. partner and I have a, a long standing dispute. So we're in Seattle. We were at the live show. Um, he tried Thank to you. get your attention for the quick justice, but we weren't loud enough. Okay. Uh, so. I've lived here for most of my life. He's been here for about 10 years now, and we have a longstanding dispute about umbrellas. People in Seattle don't use umbrellas. We don't believe in them. We are actively hostile to umbrellas. Right. And so, you know, we, we have a house together, and my daughter and I have been harassed. Where do you stand? I mean, obviously, I, you're, I'm from you're here. living in a rainproof tent. <laughs> uh, this is my painting studio behind oh, okay. me. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the question is, what's the bigger principle? People like what they like, or you need to assimilate to the culture you're in? Because my daughter and I have been telling him that after 10 years of living here, he should assimilate and should not own umbrellas anymore. But he insists on owning quite a few of them. I've lost count. There's at least half a dozen around here somewhere. Are the umbrellas part of his 
style. Are they? John, don't you dare. He, he says not terribly, but I don't know if I believe the look on his face. I think Jesse is leaving in, in anger because I made a disparaging reference to style. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Oh, Jesse has brought some stylish umbrellas. See, none of I'm them in my house are that cool. <laughs> tell me, tell me about your stylish umbrellas, Jesse. Okay, uh, I think they're all. One of them I bought from a psychic in the Hollywood Hills who I mm -hmm. met on Craigslist. Um, they're all. I think they're all thrifted and etc this one's a, this one's waxed cotton this one's filson this one is good for uh using as a walking stick or beating yeah. people with like an irish hooligan <laughs> with a hurley stick um yeah they're all i think they're all three are english made these are nice umbrellas part of my san francisco los angeles lifestyle and you're getting some real rain in los angeles right now so it's not just for style anymore for no, real use pouring and pouring and pouring but in seattle She's absolutely right. You cannot walk down the street without seeing someone who's really wet and wearing shorts. That's uh, the second most famous Seattle thing to see other than the fish throwing men. Pronto Charlotte suggests that in Seattle you don't use umbrellas because it's not raining, it's misting. And the rain is going sideways anyway. Yeah, not wrong. So you would like your husband, is that right, to stop using these uh umbrellas? Unmarried cohabitating partners. Me, I, apo I apologize. That, that's okay. Um, I, I Yes, I think he needs to admit that he's from Seattle and maybe keep one for when we travel elsewhere, but the rest of them should go. Where is he from originally? Originally uh, Annapolis, but he did come oh. here through San Francisco, which is, I think, where some of them were acquired. And this is primarily because it is embarrassing you and your daughter when you walk down the street together? We're embarrassed that we live with umbrellas. If he had a storage unit somewhere else where he kept them, that wouldn't bother us so much. But wait, how many does he have? Power. Like in San Francisco, <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> I, I think six or seven, but you know we don't want to be seen living with umbrellas. You're that anti-umbrella. We're from Seattle. That's so if he had, if he had his own, if he kept, if he, if he was the member of a club. Like the old, like the Keen's Chop House in New York City used to be a, a pipe smoking club, and you would, you would have your pipe and you would store it in the in the restaurant to keep there for you, your own private pipe, and they'd store it on the wall. They'd go and get it for you, and then you would smoke your tobacco. And if he was at a at an umbrella club, if he had a private umbrella club, and he left his umbrellas there, and went there of an afternoon, and then took a little walk around town by himself with his umbrella without without the umbrella ever crossing your threshold or ever being seen with you, would that be okay or no? I, I would say that passes into that's his own private time. So it, it would annoy me, but I don't have a right to be annoyed by it. Does he, well, you don't have to be a right to be annoyed by him owning umbrellas. <laughs> either. <laughs> I mean, I understand. I, I will say this. He can't walk down the street with you with a, with an umbrella. That's fair. If that's embarrassing to you, that's fair, but he's allowed to. I think having seven umbrellas is probably he needs he needs a proper uh, display mechanism, or else he's a hoarder for those umbrellas. That may need Ooh, to be out of the house. But if he has one or two functional umbrellas and wants to use them on his own time, I can't stop. I mean, you know, it's the home of the Bumper Shoot Festival, Seattle. Sure. I'll change my ruling if you can guess what I'm eating. ABC. My no? screen is not big enough. Those look like dried bananas. No. Sorry, you're out of here. I have a combination coat. Bad guess. Thank the you, office. Rebecca. That's where I store these office umbrellas. And then mm -hmm. my home sticks and umbrellas are in a uh, a metal faux elephant's foot in my office. A faux, a faux foot. A faux elephant's foot. A faux a elephant's foot. Elephant that, foot. That, yes. Yeah. So if there was something else, that would be horrible. No, it's made in the shape of an elephant foot made of metal. Jesse Thorne, why don't you tell them why we're here? MaximumFun.org slash join. It's the Max Fun Drive, baby. We don't ask for you to support Max Fun or support this show all the time. We only do it once a week. 
excuse me, we only do it once a year for about a week and a half. And this is that time. So go to MaximumFun.org slash join and become a member if you haven't already. If you already are, well, then you know how great you feel every time you listen to our show or watch a live stream. It's MaximumFun.org slash join. Well, I, I put a banner down here that shouldn't be there. There we go. And then I, but I did mean to do this. I added Kimberly. Hello, Kimberly. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Can you guess what I'm eating? Here, I'll um, show you really quickly. Hmm. And then I'll, then, and this is what it sounds like. Sorry, misophonians. Um, some oh. sort of puffed grain that's put mm, hold, good held guess. together by like honey. I don't know. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good guess. So far, no one's gotten it right, but that's a good guess. How can I help you today? How can we help you today? Do you got to okay. beef with someone? I do, and I'm too afraid to actually write in and bring her to justice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm okay. doing it here when she's at work. Um, okay, so it's my sister. I have an older sister. We yeah. grew up in San Francisco. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you better write 415. Yeah, I live in Seattle where the Oops. rain is weird. Um, anyways, not ha that has nothing to do with it. Um, my sister likes to be a certain level of early, which is pretty close to being late in my book. It's like she, if something's at three o'clock, she'll kind of aim to get there around like anywhere from three to three thirty. Mm. Um, whereas I am one of those types of people who are like, I, if something's at three o'clock, I want to be in the area by two forty-five. Right. And you know, so because San Francisco, where she still lives, is like, you know, you don't want to drive more than one car for multiple reasons. Um, but I always end up, I'm a younger sister, and I feel like I end up succumbing to her sometimes because hmm. she's older. But we both have like anxiety. She has anxiety about being too early. I have anxiety about being too late. And let me stop you right there. Yeah. There is no anxiety about being too early. Okay. <laughs> Take it from me, a guy who has toured with John Hodgman. <laughs> there is no, that is the, that is the solution to anxiety. I have a question. Kim. I mean, everyone, everyone is made anxious by their own things and I, I get it, but she's your older sister, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't like to swear on the podcast, so I'm only going to say it here quietly. She's fucking with you. Okay. There's no way that like, she's just an older sister bullying you. I'm anxious about being too early. What possible reason? What's wrong with being too early? You just, you're so relaxed because you know you're on time and you just can have time to look around. You've built in time to just take a moment to breathe. And then you walk in and you're on time. There's only anxiety in being late. Am I wrong, Jesse? What kind of events are we talking about, Kimberly? Because that's important here. Um, most of these events are, they're not like reservations at restaurants that she'll like be on time for, but if they are like birthday parties or uh, like family get together type things, like she. Oh, if it's a family get together, you want to be two hours late so you can leave as quickly okay. as possible. Well, I yeah, Kimberly, that. you you were talking about this, like you were talking about everybody's getting together to catch the train to go to Omaha. Uh, what you're describing here are social events with very flexible arrival expectations, where in fact, culturally speaking, it is often weird to show up right on time. Right. Some of these sorts of events, it can be an imposition to show up immediately on time, certainly to show up early. So I'm a very on-time type of person. Uh, I'm not a show-up-way-early person like John is, but I really do like to be there on time. Uh, but I'm not talking about a house party when right. I say I want to show up on time. I'm talking right. about something where everyone has to start at the same time or nobody can start. Yeah, I guess that it most often happens for like those kinds of activities. She'll like cut it pretty close for like reservations and whatnot. And then like when we go to the airport, I like to be there like two hours before the plane 
leaves. Yes. And she yes. likes to be there like 30 minutes before boarding starts, which is no. Wow. No. Okay, I was about so John and I I'm I am perfectly glad to go to the airport whenever John wants. It's not a problem in my life. I'm perfectly glad. Very sincerely. But like John is someone who shows up to the airport hours early. That's one of the reasons he's so invested in his airport mileage because it gets him into the club where it's less lousy to sit in the airport. Yeah. I do feel like basically whether I'm coming from a hotel or my house, I would rather be in either my hotel or my house than in an airport. So I go as late as I can without uh, risking missing the flight. Um, however, when I say that, I don't mean half an hour before the flight takes off. <laughs> bananas. I'm talking about I just show up an hour ahead of time if it's a if it's a small to medium size airport. You know what I mean? We have a comment here from our producer, Jennifer Marmer, who's uh, home these days on parental leave. Congratulations again to Jennifer Marmer and her whole new big family. And she points out, don't show up too early to birthday parties and stuff. It will cause anxiety for the host. And I think this is kind of the rule of thumb. It, it doesn't matter whether you show up early or whether you show up late. If you evaluate, uh, honestly, that the time that you arrive will cause stress for someone else, adjust when you arrive. So yeah, if you just show up too early to a dinner party, uh, uh, that's awkward and it, it, it freaks out the host. So don't show up too early to a dinner party. That does cause anxiety and will, as many people pointed out, cause internal stress for you too. So, But if you show up too late to an event or if it's, uh, you know, uh, or for example, if you're meeting your sister at a restaurant or whatever and showing up late to the airport with your sister is going to cause your sister anxiety, then don't do that. Make an adjustment. Show up on time. It's all very fluid. As Kate was pointing out in, in Portugal and lots of other countries, like it's their standard of on time is very different than Americans. And even between the East Coast and the West Coast or the West Coast and the East Coast can be very different. But you know, what you're trying to do is with all things in etiquette is to make other people comfortable. That's the point of these dumb rules is that everyone be comfortable. So within the comfort level for you and then evaluate whether being early is going to cause stress or whether late is going to cause stress. Causing other people stress is no good. And if your younger sister says this causes me stress and you don't make an adjustment, then you're a bad older sister. That's what I say. Okay, thank you. Have you. A, you have a terrible older sister is basically what I'm saying. I say congratulations to Kimberly for living on the set of a prestige television program about younger millennials. <laughs> I think it looks great. Thank it you. <laughs> looks fantastic. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, Jesse, I got to run because I got another thing to do. But we'll do more of this as we go through the Max Fun Drive. It's a lot of fun. I enjoyed you, it too. You can tell that I love running the banners. Here comes one now. Maximumfun.org slash join. Of course, Max Fun Drive is, and sorry, Kimberly, I'll, I'll, I'll boot you out. You know what? I like your apartment. You're going to stay here for a second. It's a nice apartment. It's a lot nice nicer apartment. than this nightmare that I'm in. <laughs> uh, 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 Maximum Fun, Max Fun Drive is the, the two weeks a year when we ask you to support the show if you're a listener. Um, if you're a listener and you're a member, you know what we're talking about. But if you've if you've come to know the Judge John Hodgman show um, over the over the past year or so, first of all, welcome, and second of all, this is how we do it. Uh, our shows, all of Max Fun uh, Network shows, including Judge John Hodgman, are supported directly by the audience. You can join and become a member and directly support the work that you love any time of year. But Max Fun Drive is the only time per year that we actually ask you to do it, and when we ask you, we mean it. Please go to MaximumFun.org slash join because it's also the only time of year when we're offering stickers, uh, a, a cool new apron, Maximum Yum apron, our, our family our cookbook. Signature spice. Our new signature, signature spice. signature spice blend. Uh, and, of course, all of the incredible bonus content that you can get unlocked just at $5 per month. So you know what to do. And if, and, and if you've done it already, thank you. Uh, if you'd like to get a gift membership, 
um, for someone who might not be able to afford it this year. Even just an anonymous Max Fundster, you have that option. Just go to MaximumFun.org slash join. Every new upgrading membership or uh, gift membership counts towards our goal. We're going to unlock that two weeks of Get Your Pets at 2,500 new and upgrading members in two seconds. Right, Kimberly? Yes. That's right. Kimberly says yes. Now, anyone else want to take a guess before I sign off at what I'm snacking on here? Looks like a puffed barley. Is it ramen? Yeah. You got it, Kimberly. It's uncooked ramen. Oh, yeah. Did you put the dust on it? No. Oh. I'm saving, oh. The, saving the dust for later. Got it. Cool. <laughs> to eat it like a lick em stick? Uh -huh. <laughs> a pixie stick? No. Okay. No. Kimberly, where'd you go to high school? I went to convents. I was a private oh. school kid. Convent, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Up in here. Pack Heights. I guess I'm better than you. Whoa. Because I'm more real because I went to public high school. Yeah. No, I, I, but I grew up by Washington. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Nice high school. George Washington High School, Judge Hodgman. Okay. Also, I got to go. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. We'll do this again soon. So keep an eye on the Judge John Hodgman Facebook page. Keep an eye on my social medias for announcements of fun little pop up events like this. And of course, if we hit that goal of 2,500 new and upgrading members for the Judge John Hodgman podcast specifically, uh, I'll be doing this every day for two weeks, talking to you and your pets and your cats and your dogs and your iguanas. Until then, happy crunching. Judge John Hodgman rules, that is all.